Hey guys, it is J Star Wars 360 here with the final Clone Wars vlog because a certain studio had to cancel the show. But more on that later. This is Sacrifice, the final episode of the Yoda arc. In this one, Yoda travels to Korriban, or Moribon, as for some reason it's called in this episode, but I digress, to face one final trial before he can gain the, the power to retain its consciousness after he dies and do the Force and become a Force ghost. And this episode, again, really good. I mean, I will admit, I do feel like it was a little un it wasn't what I expected, but at the same time, it was really good. So, again, I shouldn't need to say this at this point, but again, full sp I'm going to go full, sp full spoilers in this one. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, and you should... Go watch it, because I'm going to ruin it. Now, before we get into it, I just want to touch on something I forgot to mention in my last vlog, which is Yoda's robes, which are get really tattered and beat up in this one. And I really like that, because it shows just how much he's been through. And I appreciate the animators for going the mile to animate that, because cloth can be really hard to work with. And early on in the show, they were talking about how difficult it is to animate cloth, and yet here they're just doing it flawlessly. And it's really nice because, it, again, it's showing how difficult Yoda's journey is. It kind of reminds me of what they did with Batman in the Arkham games. And how his costume would gradually get destroyed as the game would go on. So, yeah. So, Korriban. So, first off, the title. When I saw this title, I thought, someone's gonna die. But, but someone didn't die. In fact, it was just Yoda sacrificing himself to save Anakin, which I thought was kind of clever, but more on that later. But first off, let's talk about this. First off, we're on Korriban. I'm, I'm, I know it's called Moribon, but I'm just going to call it Korriban. That's just because one of that's what I'm used to calling it. I mean, unless they start, this becomes like the official name of the planet, I might change. But just for the sake of confusion, just because it's the first thing that pops to my mind, I'm just going to say Korriban. So first off. An episode of the Clone Wars on Korriban. How could you not be excited about that? I mean, it's the freaking home world of the Sith. It is a planet from KOTOR, which... And the Old Republic. I haven't played Old Republic, but I have played the first KOTOR. And it's, like, one of my favorite. And it's an awesome video game. It's on the... It's on Steam. It's on the App Store of Mac. Buy it if you haven't played it. It's amazing. Like, I'm a huge fan. I love the story in the game. So... You can imagine I was pretty excited when I found out we were going to Korriban. And I was so excited to see whatever it was we had, Filoni had. But first off, I love the design of this place. It's exactly the way it is in KOTOR and presumably Old Republic. I haven't played it, I wouldn't know. And it was just so awesome. The temples, the the exterior, the interior. It, I'm like, that's Korriban. And, I mean, they've Filoni has done had a few nods to stuff from the Expanded Universe before, but I think this is, like, the best nod ever. Oh, my gosh. And we go inside the tomb, and unfortunately, I had this bit spoiled for me, but it was still cool nonetheless. We get to see Darth Bane, who, if you don't know who he is, he is a character from the Old Republic era who... There's a few novels written on him, and it was really cool to see him brought there. I mean, I haven't read anything, but it's cool to see him acknowledging something from the expanded universe, and I'm sure people were excited to see, who are familiar with him, are excited to see him. He's vo He was also voiced by Mark Hamill, which I thought was awesome. I mean, you could, it was slightly garbled, and I honestly I don't think I would have been able to tell if I hadn't known about beforehand, but yeah, Mark Hamill is voicing him. He was basically doing the same kind of voice he does for characters like Joker and Fire Lord Ozai, except it was a bit amplified. Really cool. That being said, I do wish they had done a bit more with Moribon, with Korriban. Because, I mean, the rest of the episode is basically Yoda, Palpatine trying to end, break Yoda's consciousness. And again, it's really cool, as I'll talk about it in a bit, but at the same time... Ron Korriban! Fucking Korriban! Why can't we do more? Why can't we see visions of nods to Kot more nods to KOTOR, an appearance by Revan, or Darth Malgus, or something? But I digress. So let's get into the episode, which is awesome. But yeah, I don't know. It's just... 
I honestly feel like we got more of Corazon than we did of Korriban. Like, you would have just went to Korriban just to have a vision of Corazon. So, first off, I like the ritual Palpatine does in order to find Yoda. I thought that was really cool. I mean, it's something we haven't seen before, and I like the idea of, you know, not the show not limiting itself to the powers we've seen. The idea that there's more to Palpatine than just lightning and force stroke. Like, there's other powers. And I thought that was a really cool and interesting ritual. And also, there was some... I, I was kind of tense a bit when Palpatine was cutting Dooku's hand. I, I'm gonna say Palpatine, because we all know who that, that's who it is. It's even if you haven't seen the films, it's so obvious it's him. But anyway, I mean, what? Do you think it's just a coincidence that Palpatine and Palpatine and the Emperor sound alike and their voices changed at the exact same time? But anyway, so when Palpatine goes to cut Dooku's hand, I tense a bit because, you know, I'm not much a fan of graphic stuff. But thankfully, they censored it nice by not showing the knife, the blade hit his hand, which I thought was nice. So that was cool. Also, I'm going to say this. I was a bit skeptical about Tim Curry as Palpatine, but af but this episode cemented. Like, I really feel like they got Tim Curry as the Emperor because, he man, he is awesome as the Emperor. I mean, I'll, I'll admit, I, it is a shame that they weren't able to get someone who sounds exactly like Palpatine from the films, but he still does a really nice job. I mean, like, again, I really don't care much for his Palpatine voice, which sounds very nasally, but, oh my gosh, his, pal his Emperor voice. Again, not the original, but still really good. And on that note, the... Emperor... He's been pretty... Ever since they've showed him in the flesh in the Darth Maul arc, he seems to be doing a bit more. I'm curious what other plans Filoni had for the Emperor, and I'm probably going to be saying that a lot, but it is true. Um, let's see, I like how we get to hear Sifo-Dyas' voice, I, you probably can't see this, but there's lag on my video for some reason, I have no clue what's wrong with it. You probably won't notice it, but if you do, just close your eyes and, or put up a Star Wars image. Anyway, so I'm going to continue. Also, I do like in the vision how they are suspicious of Dooku's ship coming to Corazon and going to the industrial section. Because I'm, like, thinking, like, regardless if this is real life, even if this did happen, would the Jedi be suspicious? And I like how in the vision they are. I'm curious to know if you, if we're ever going to see that location again, you know, the hideout from Attack of Thrones, which was cool to see again. And it was cool to see that little room we haven't seen before. But I'm curious if they were going to do any more of it, or if Yoda was actually going to investigate that and see if it's Palpatine's hideout. So, by the way, the vision was really cool. Really awesome. It was a nice way to work a lightsaber fight into the show and end the show in an light, awesome lightsaber fight, even if it wasn't the original plan. Um, really cool vision. I was a little worried going into to the... When I saw the trailer, that was basically giving away the arc, but what I thought was going to happen was Palpatine was going to come to Korriban and fight Yoda. I did not expect to have this vision, and it was a really pleasant surprise. First off, I mean, it makes sense for Yoda to use a lightsaber here, because, again, it's not real. It's an illusion. And also, we've seen y Yoda use the Force plenty, and it's still spiritual. So if, for those of you who are worried it's contradicting anything, we got two episodes of Yoda not using a lightsaber. So I think by now he's on the right to use one. I might have just contradicted myself there, but okay. But let's talk about the fight, which was fucking awesome. I mean, again, ever since the end, Darth Maul arc of Season 5, the creators have just been owning in lightsaber fights, and here is no exception. And it's honestly, I think this fight is better than the one in Revenge of the Sith, because the first one was real, and we honestly knew it was just going to be a stalemate, because not, both of them are in the original trilogy, so there was no tension. But here, it was very obvious it was a vision. Like, this wasn't real, it was in Yoda's head, which means anything goes. So you wouldn't... 
So you, so I really had no idea where they were going to go with this. I mean, it could honestly, anything could happen in this because it wasn't real. And they really go nuts with that. Like, this fight gets really creative. Like, they're fighting on the Cadillac. The Cadillac's going down. Palpatine's hanging on. Yoda froze his lightsaber, and the Cadillac falling down. They're falling. Yoda's trying to take off the hood. It's just, it's just really crazy. Because, whereas, if you made them fight in real life, you'd, it would be a stalemate. Palpatine would have to escape or something, and that would make him look pathetic. I mean, Palpatine is not like Grievous or Dooku who runs away when he loses. Palpatine is the powerful lord of the stuff. He needs to stand his ground. He needs to walk out with a win. And if you had them fight in real life, I don't think that would work. So I'm really glad they did it the way they did it. And again, because again, there's no tension if you have them fight in real life. It's like when Anakin, whenever Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Dooku fight in the show, there's no tension because we know Dooku's going to escape. But yeah, so really creative way to do that. Um... I also like the ending. We get to hear some music from the original trilogy, both in the end of, both in the vision Yoda see, gets and the end of the episode. Um. So it looks like I'm again. I think they left this open to interpretation, but it looks like Yoda got to see what happens in the later films. But again, they it's white blinding light. They kind of left it. Seems open to interpretation as to whether or not Yoda, um, saw if he saw anything or how much he saw. But yeah, I felt like this was a really good way to end the season. It was a fitting end. I'm curious to know if Filoni altered the ending at all when he learned this would be the final episode he would ever make. Especially some of the dialogue he's saying to Mason Obi Wan about how the end is near. I mean, it, but again, or it could, or it, that line could have always been there, and suggesting to fans that the show is winding down, and they did, they're starting to wrap things up, which was pretty obvious. I mean, I think they had, I know they were going to have a seventh season. I've heard rumors they were going to go to eight, but I don't know. So yeah. So, I have a couple things I couldn't think of anywhere to put them in the episode vlog, so I'm just going to mention them now. I like the outfit Dooku's wearing in this episode. It's a shame you won't be able to use anymore, and and I liked hearing the Emperor's theme. I, I didn't have that many little details. So, my final thoughts on th this arc and the season. I'll do one on the show and its cancellation a separate video because this is going really long and I don't want, and I have a lot to say on that too, so... This vlog was really good. It was exceptionally good. One of the best things I've ever seen in the Clone Wars. Ever. Not the best, but one of the best. And at the end of the day, I think it justified this Lost Missions, which are really good. And makes me really curious about what hap would have happened afterwards. Um... Again, overall, I fought the season. It was a mixed bag. I liked the Order 66 arc. It was fun. It was, but the banking arc was meh. The Dispirit arc was all right. This was the only thing I thought was really good. But at the same time, I am really curious as to what Filoni would think of the, what other plans Filoni had. And, but in regards to that, separate video. So please join me next time when I do my final Clone Wars video. I will talk about my thoughts on the show overall, my thoughts on whether or not this was a fitting end to the Clone Wars, and my thoughts on the cancellation, and a bit on the future going forward. So yeah, this is JSTAR360, and until then, may the Force be with you.